So how does a weapon making channel collaborate with a powerlifting channel? I think a better question is how do you transport a 61 pound mace from Illinois to California? How's it going guys? Today we're going to be making something kind of stupid, uh, but no less cool because of that fact. Now, being that the average weight of a warhammer in medieval times was about four pounds, I can understand thinking that a 61 pound mace made out of a barbell and a bunch of mild steels a little overkill. But when you account for the increase in gun murder rates since medieval times, it becomes very apparent that there has to be some very drastic measures taken for your own self-defense. And if my math is correct, I think a 61 pound barbell mace is approximately 15.25 times uh, more protective than a four pound mace. And I prefer those odds. If you don't like my math, go ahead and check it. Don't argue with me, argue with math. But I think you'll find that a very very difficult battle to win. Anyways guys, let's make a uh, a really big mace. Oh, and by the way, you've got like two days left to buy a hoodie or a t-shirt, just so you know. So the materials we're starting out with will be four of these quarter inch by four inch by 12 inch steel plates. Then we've got a whole bunch of these grade eight three eighth inch by one inch bolts and then the according nuts. We've got a black steel 12 inch pipe with a two inch diameter and the cap that goes with that. Then lastly, we got this quarter inch thick by three quarter inch flat bar. So I put the cap on the pipe and now I'm taking some measurements of this uh, so that I can know what design I have to draw on the steel to cut out. So I know starting at two inches, I have to go inwards five sixteenths. Go upwards a half an inch, bring it down to a quarter of an inch, straight to the top. And this is mostly for aesthetics. I'm going to mark it here at a half inch. Draw that line all the way across, 45 on the end here. And all of this stuff here is going to be stuff that we're going to cut away and you can probably sort of see how the top of the mace is starting to shape itself out. Now seven inches down, I mark it right here. Bring that in about three quarter inches at a 45. Straight line from the bottom connecting to the end of that line. Mark here a half inch in, then a diagonal to the line that we made before. And now here is all the stuff that we're gonna be cutting away. So I just recorded myself cutting out this first piece of steel, and then after I had finally finished that, then I checked the camera and found out that I never actually turned it on. So here is the part where I trace out this piece of steel onto the next piece of steel and pretend it is the first time I'm cutting it out. Gee whiz, I can't wait to cut out this steel with my angle grinder for the first time. Take me away from home Show me all the places I've never known And we'll chase the night Race all of these broken dreams and flight And we'll fly 
I really hope the inside of my lungs don't look like this. Hashtag cultural appropriation. Hashtag gray lives matter. Now, as I'm sure you guys can imagine, just continue tracing out the pieces and cutting them out, but make sure you only use the first piece that you cut out as a stencil to trace out the rest of the pieces because if you just continuously use the last piece that you cut out, eventually the tiny little deviations in between the pieces become exaggerated as they go on and you end up with just totally the wrong shape. I'm sure there's a joke in there somewhere that I'm missing, but I took way too many takes and too much time trying to film that last scene without messing up my words, uh, and I have to move on. I've, I've spent too much time here. Now I'm gonna hit all four of these pieces with the steel wire brush to get all the mill scale off so that the weld can take properly. Now with all of these finished, I can get to work tightening this cap down as tight as it will physically go. Some gloves. All right, I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. You know what, I'm actually gonna clean this off too. All right, now I've stacked up some wood right here to get this plate to the perfect height so that it will be directly in the center of the pipe. I'm not gonna do the full weld right now, I'm just gonna do a few tack welds, but once I have all the flanges on, then I'll do the full welds. All right, I've never welded steel this thick. I don't think the welds penetrated very much. I'm not used to welding like this. I think I'm gonna have to flip this over and put tacks on the other side too. All right, that was a lot more effective. Now I'm gonna clean up the spatter with the steel wire brush. All right, now this thing's already needlessly strong. I guarantee you could run a car over it and probably do a lot more damage to your car than it would to this. Uh, but just because I think it'd be cool, I'm gonna be making it completely needlessly strong by cutting out some buttresses from this flat bar that I showed you in the beginning and welding. What? Okay, um, I'm gonna be cutting buttresses out from here. Oh, come on, it's not that funny. Then you just drop them in here and you weld them in. And in these instances where the surface is not exactly level, so they kind of fall crooked like that, you can use a magnet to straighten them out while you weld. All right, we're almost done. Now we just gotta do what we gotta do to make sure that this stays on the end of the barbell. I suppose if you wanted to, you could just start out with a shorter pipe and then not even use the cap. And then from there, you would just put the barbell straight through it and then you just use one of those normal barbell clamp things on the end of it to hold it on. But I don't really think these are all that reliable. I think I have a much better idea than that. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drill a series of 3 8 inch holes here and here all around the pipe. Bound 
And now that I got all the holes drilled out, I put a nut onto one of the grade 8 bolts and I'm going to put it into the hole and then weld just the nut to the pipe so that the bolt can still come out. And I'm going to do the same thing on all the holes. And with that finished, all you've got left is the paint job, and you got one of the most irresponsibly cool things I think I've ever made. The head is 16 pounds, the bar is 45 pounds, so you're looking at a 61 pound Dark Souls boss fight weapon. That kills me, but I can't test this thing out right now, but I can spoil the secret a little bit. This is going to be one of the weapons that Omar Esau is going to be testing on some zombie go boom Ivan heads, along with a few other ones that you guys never got to see tested, but that I know that you really wanted to see tested. But guys, if you want to see some vlogs for the trip down to Oregon and then to California, please consider getting a hoodie or a t-shirt, teespring.com forward slash alpha dash three, so I can get a vlogging camera. No matter what, some cool stuff is coming up in the near future but that's all i got for today so thank you guys very much for watching i'll talk to you later bye